Hello everyone, welcome to TIFF Stay at Home Cinema, brought to you by TIFF and Crave. We're streaming live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and at tiff.net slash stay at home. My name is Cameron Bailey, I'm the co-head and the artistic director at TIFF. I wanna thank you for joining us. Tonight, we are watching, or maybe re-watching, Parasite. This year's Best Picture Oscar winner from South Korean director Bong Joon-ho. We will press play on the film at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time, that's 4.30 p.m. on the West Coast of North America. And if you're in Korea, that's 8.30 a.m. Our special guest is the breakout star from Parasite's historic run up to Oscar night, the interpreter and filmmaker Sharon Choi. Now, before we get started, just a few shout outs. We are on indigenous land and I'd like to acknowledge indigenous storytellers from coast to coast to coast. We'd also like to thank our frontline workers who are still working to keep us safe and healthy and fed. And uh, at TIFF, we'd like to thank our government partners. The government of Canada, the province of Ontario and the city of Toronto have been longtime supporters. And huge thanks to our corporate partners as well. Our lead sponsor is Bell and our major sponsors are RBC, L'Oreal, Paris and Visa. Thanks also to the donors and members, maybe uh, you're one of them, for supporting us, especially right now. Uh, special thanks tonight to the Consulate General of the Republic of Korea in Toronto for partnering with TIFF on this event. We're delighted to have Consulate General Mr. Taehyung Chung and the Consulate contribute to this opportunity to talk about Parasite through TIFF Stay at Home Cinema. We'll be welcoming questions submitted by the Korean community during the Q&A. Now, Sharon Choi is a Korean-American interpreter and filmmaker. She began working with director Bong last year at the Cannes Film Festival, where Parasite made its premiere and went on to win the Palme d'Or. From there, Parasite took off, going to dozens of festivals, including our own here in Toronto, and getting on board an award season train that just kept picking up speed. Troy was the director Bong's side every step of the way, translating his interviews and acceptance speeches from Korean into English, and turning his sly, clever, and sometimes detailed answers into American idiom. Bong Joon-ho is a very charming artist already. Sharon Choi made him irresistible. She's also a filmmaker in her own right, currently working on her first feature film screenplay, and she recently produced the short film Mother of Three. Sharon, welcome to Stay at Home Cinema. Hi, thank hey. you so much for that introduction. Yeah, how you doing? Good, um, you know, it's it's been a long journey coming back from the awards season and just like trying to get used to daily life again, trying to get used to reality. Um, uh -huh. So that's been a process. 
And of course, with the pandemic going on, um, it's just been a huge ball of confusion that I've been in. And I'm like finally slowly starting to come out of it and trying to um, you know, work on my own stuff. Yeah. Well, I saw that cinemas in Korea are actually reopening and Peninsula is opened and, and are things looking brighter? Yeah. You know, I think um, in the beginning of the pandemic, Korea did such a great job of dealing with it that maybe that we were hopeful that perhaps by the summer, you know, it would all calm down. But, you know, with the second and third surge coming in, I think we're learn we're finally accepting that this is just going to last mm -hmm. much longer than we expected. Um, you know, Korea was never under strict lockdown like Canada or the U.S. You know, theaters were pretty much open throughout. Um, but now we're sitting seats apart. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, people are starting to go to these events. Um, and so hopefully, you know, with these new films coming out, uh, you know, the industry will pick up again. Um, but I think we'll have to see. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. Um, now, before you started working with Bong Joon-ho, uh, yeah. you had uh, studied his films. You'd written all I read about uh, his work as well. <laughs> yeah. First of all, what was that like to go from being a student of his work being right beside him, just yeah. to his voice. I mean, it, it was crazy, you know, like Memories of Murder, the host, they were on my class syllabus. I wrote a super long paper on Mother. <laughs> and so, you know, like Director Bond would always mention how he studied, you know, like films by Hitchcock or Martin Scorsese when he was in college. I was, I studied his films only a couple of years back. Yeah. Um, and so like the first moment I saw him, I was like, Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> and my hand was shaking as I was like tr taking notes of his answers. I spent like half of my energy just trying not to fangirl in front of him and ask him a bunch of questions on my own. Um, and you know that's that's been a true you know one of the biggest joys of this of this whole journey, just being next to him and hearing his words on his own process firsthand. Um, I mean, I'm never going to throw away my notebooks because it's just like a master notes, you know, on master classes by the master filmmaker. Um, Look, can I just ask you about yeah. the process? Because uh, those of us who, who would have seen simultaneous translation or interpretation at a screening or at an event, yeah. you often see the interpreter with a notebook writing down quick notes and then and then uh, offering the translation. Yeah. What like how much did you write down? What was the process that you you were doing on stage? So I never like studied or trained to be uh, an interpreter. So most interpreters I know have their own like code language so that they can write down notes quickly without having to write spell out all the words. Mm -hmm. But because I don't have that skill, I just try to write as much as I could um, <laughs> and like circle keywords that I mm -hmm. knew I shouldn't forget. Um, so for me, it was like a pretty straightforward process where I would just try to dictate everything. Um, the most important thing for me was to just make sure that I kept uh, the first sentence in mind mm -hmm. so that when he finishes his answer, I can you know, translate the first sentence right away. Mm -hmm. And I just had to rely on my short-term memory to make sure that the that words just keep coming out of my mouth. And I would mm -hmm. glance down on my notes and try to figure out what I wrote because my handwriting is so sloppy. <laughs> Sometimes I wouldn't even be able to decipher what I wrote. Um, yeah, so note taking was definitely yeah. the most important, yeah. Um, now, Parasite is the first non-English language film to win an Oscar for Best Picture. The film also won Best International Feature in February, and, and director Bong won Best Director and Best Original Screenplay. It's quite a yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, it crossed over really like no Korean film ever had, and like very yeah. few outside of um, the English-speaking world had uh, in yeah. uh, Why do you think that is? So that's a question that I think our entire team got throughout the uh, the campaign process. And we would also just be like, what is going on? Like, what's happening? Why? Of course, you know, every you can't deny that Parasite is an incredible film, but no film has crossed over in this way. And um, I think we still don't really know the answer to that. Uh, for me, I just know that when I saw the film, I knew it had this incredible balance of just ingenious storytelling, 
the, um, the, the just the craft of the filmmaking in itself and also just how current it is mm -hmm. and how contemporary it is and the, the issue that it deals with, you know, econ like socioeconomic disparity, I think is just prevalent throughout, you know, anywhere you go. Um, and just all those things combined, I think people really just grabbed onto the film. And I would always tell my friends that just it's just such a fun movie. You don't have to care about cinema. You don't have to care about the craft. You'll just have a great experience watching it, especially with a group of people. And I think now, especially since we don't have easy access to this collective you know, viewing experience, you just appreciate um, what it's like to be in a dark room filled with people and hearing everyone gasp and hyperventilate to the exciting story. And I think that all added on to the viewing experience. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe that's why, but who knows, you know, it was such a feat. Well, yeah. you mentioned that experience of watching it with an audience and yeah. people all react together. And I think so much of that comes from the surprises in, yeah. but in, in Bong Joon-ho's films as a rule, because you never know, like anything could happen in one of his films. Yeah. And between comedy and thriller and drama, and, and they, they have that sense of real unpredictability, which is, I think, can be exciting for an audience. Yeah. Um, and I guess I, I'm, I'm just curious, if, if in interpreting for him, if you found that he's that way as well, does his mind also work the way that his films do? Oh yeah, you know, um, a lot of people would, you know, ask him for tips on how to write, you know, such a great script and all of it. And he would always just reply with, I have a weird personality. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, a film, you know, especially if it's from a writer director, it's a true reflection of who that person is just as an individual. And, you know, Director Bong in person is so, so witty. Um, he has an incredible, weird sense of humor that just makes you laugh, uh, mm -hmm. comes out of nowhere. Um, and yeah, so he truly is what Parasite is like, <laughs> I would have to say. Okay. Yeah. Um, we've got a couple of questions um, from uh, our members. Um, I want to ask you one, first of all, this is from Puru Saravana. Uh, it's a two-part question. Were there unique challenges in finding appropriate translations for some culturally based South Korean dialogue or content uh, that would parallel concepts familiar to English speaking audiences? Um, and, and then as a result of Parasite's success, do you think there'll be less of a need to make changes uh, to specific Korean references for English speaking audiences? Well, I think first of all, my job was made easier by the great English uh, translated subtitles in the film. I think the subtitles already did a great job in making sure that the story translates to an international audience. And, um, you know, for me, there were definitely difficult moments trying to translate a very Korean concept um, into English. What I would, you know, for, but first of all, you know, Dr. Bong is someone who's often worked with interpreters. So sometimes during his answers, he would realize that some of what he's saying is difficult to translate into English. So he would go back on his answers and change his answers so that it would be easier for me to interpret. Um, but sometimes, you know, with uh, like say, like proverbs and especially things like that, I would sort of do a direct translation on it and then sort of add my own translator's notes, trying to explain what that means. Um, I'm not sure if that's what you're supposed to do as an interpreter. I'm sure like some interpreters would be like, oh, you can't do that. Um, but, you know, for me, it was very important that um, the audience understood the essence and the emotion of what the actors and the, the crew members and the, uh, Dr. Bond was saying. So, you know, um, I tried my best and also me being bicultural, I think helped as well. You know, me being familiar with Korean culture and American culture made that leap a little, a little easier. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. There, there are some things that are famous in the film in Parasite, and I don't want to reveal too much for people who haven't seen it, but there's a certain dish, for instance. Yeah. Or <laughs> Ramdon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Apparently, uh, 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 an actual Korean dish until now, but um, it's the kind of thing that, that, uh, that may 
be a little difficult to translate when you're talking about it. Yeah. I just wonder, are, like, are there, were there specific things in the film or the way that he would talk about the film that you would have to give Korean context for to a non-Korean audience? Um, I think, you know, director Bong did a, um, always try to incorporate trying to explain it to an international audience. Like for Ramdan, he would mention that it's a mix of like two instant noodles that are very popular with children in Korea. Um, I think one of the things that uh, we often talked about was this idea of family um, and how in Korea, the concept of family is so much focused on food. Mm -hmm. um, uh, family is the people you eat with. And it's actually reflected in the word family. Mm -hmm. It's comprised of two Chinese characters um, just like eating mouth. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, cultural things like that, he would always explain as well. Um, and also, you know, that great scene where the uh, Lun Guang, the original housekeeper, um, is, oh, I'm trying not to give things away. Um, <laughs> careful. Um, when she's like imitating someone. Yes. Mm -hmm. see? Yeah. Um, so we would have to provide context for that, how that's, uh, you know, it's a very popular skit for Korean comedians to uh, put on that tone um, to imitate that particular person. <laughs> um, yeah, things like that. Um, um, I, I have another member's question, another tip member, Jamila Baksh, who wants to know, she says, uh, the movie was such a hit across the globe. Which country's reaction surprised you the most and why? Um, I'm not sure if there was a particular country because, you know, any, any country you go to, there's always the rich and the poor. I think what really surprised us was just how universal it was. You know, you during, you know, the whole tour, you come into contact from people from so many countries and they would always say, oh, you know, we have this neighborhood in, in Hong Kong that just looks like the one in Parasite, in London, in, in Paris, in all these uh, different cities and countries. Everyone would, you know, talk about how this is us, you know, this, we go through the same thing too. So just, um, just how much, the sheer amount of responses like that that we heard, I think that's what really um, surprised us the most. That one film that's very local, actually, it's filled with such Korean details that one film could resonate with people from so many different um, parts of the world. Um, I think that was the most surprising. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's one phrase that you translated that went viral, became a kind of mantra people enjoying international cinema and it was uh once you overcome the one inch tall barrier uh, yeah used to so many more amazing films um can you talk a little bit about that particular moment and what choices you made in turning director bong's korean words into english um so that was actually a pretty direct trend the one inch tall barrier was a pretty direct translation mm -hmm. um and also uh, he didn't quite say amazing. Um, he said you, you'll be introduced to many more films or a wider variety of films or something like that. But, you know, um, Dirk Bong never shared any of his speeches beforehand. So mm. I had to translate everything on the spot. So amazing was just whatever <laughs> the word that came out of my mouth. Name. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, for those award speeches, it was really important that I don't take up his time right. because you only have like you have less than a minute to deliver your speech. And if I if he talks for like 15 seconds and it takes me 15 seconds to translate, then I'm wasting his time. So I had to make sure I'm like brief and succinct. Um, and just like on point <laughs> with what he has, to, what he wants to say. Mm -hmm. Um and you know that was something that Director Bong uh, had said repeatedly uh, during this tour. You know, uh, as Koreans, as Korean viewers, we're very um, used to watching subtitled films uh, because you know Kore the Korean film market, as robust as it is, it's smaller than Hollywood. So, like most countries, we would get foreign films um, in big theaters, and um, so the fact that people would be adverse to watching subtitles subtitle films in itself is a little strange to us. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and you know, that was, that, was a, <laughs> that was another great response that we kept getting. It's like, oh, you know, I met people were like, I usually don't watch subtitled films. I usually don't like reading subtitles, but with Parasite, you know, I just forgot that I was 
uh, looking at subtitles because the film was so captivating. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's a great, important message that he, he sent out to the mm -hmm. world. Um, I know that you're a filmmaker and screenwriter as well. I wonder if could you tell us a little bit about your own filmmaking, where you are, what you're working on right now. And we also have a question from uh, Jae Hee Hyun uh, by the uh, Korean consulate in Toronto, which is, uh, who is Sharon's favorite actor or actress to cast in your own uh, upcoming future film? Oh my God, that's such a, a big question. Um, well, first of all, I am writing a script. Um, it's set in Korea, uh, but I'm really hesitant to talk about what kind of story it is because right now it's one thing, but you know, I'm still in the process of discovering my own story. Um, so it's one thing right now, but it can be com something completely different once I'm finished with it. Um, so I kind of would like to wait before I talk more about it. Um, but you know, it's very personal and um, it's set in Korea because I'm actually not Korean American. I'm Korean Korean. I pretty uh, much- You spent yeah, some time in Korea, but not, you're not Korean American. No, so I actually spent uh, like two years in the States before college. I was pretty much born and raised in Korea. So um, I think that, you know, like most first features, you know, it's a very personal story that I have to get out before I move on to bigger stories. Um, so it's set in Korea and it's set in a farm. I think that's as much as I want to talk about that. Um, in terms of actors, God, um, I love... Jessica Chastain. Okay. Um, I love Al Pacino. <laughs> I mean, getting to meet Al Pacino was like a huge highlight. Um, oh. which I just shook hands with him, but just that in itself, I was like hyperventilating. Um, <laughs> um, uh, and I'm very interested in, uh, you know, working with young Korean f female actors because I think Korea right now is seeing like a huge new wave of Korean, young Korean filmmakers. Mm -hmm. Some of my favorite Korean films to come out of Korea has been, um, you know, like first features, uh, thesis projects even by young Korean filmmakers. So um, I wanna work with a lot of young women. Okay. <laughs> Uh, that's great. Uh, Sharon, thank you so much for taking the time. It, it was just really remarkable to see how well you did in a, an unprecedented run that director Bong had from Cannes to, uh, through all these festivals to the Oscars. And it's good to know that you know you soaked up a lot along the way and that you're making your own yeah. film now too. So congratulations on that. Thank, thank you so for much. Your time. Um, we're gonna go over now to watch Parasite if you're in Canada, we're watching on Crave, and we'll press play at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 on the West Coast. If you're not in Canada, find Parasite wherever you can. It should be everywhere by now. And we will be live tweeting as well using the hashtag TIFF at home. Sharon Troy, thank you very much. Thank you.